Hey guys, welcome back. So today we want to talk about the Russian AK-12. And why am I bringing up the AK-12? Well, as you know, there is a war going on in Ukraine and we're seeing more and more images of the AK-12. I'm getting feedback from people in that region, people that are familiar with the conflict and some of the comments they've made about the AK-12 and its popularity or in other cases, it's unpopularity with Russian forces. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the AK-12, the history of it and why it came into being and why I believe it's hot trash and there's really no reason to pick one up other than being a military collector and just wanting to collect every military small arm on the planet. So anyway, that's what today's video is about. We hope you enjoy it. Before we get started with today's video, if you guys would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Follow that link and help support us here on YouTube. With that being said, let's get started talking about the AK-12, some alternatives that were already available in the United States market that you can go out and pick up right now. Before the Segas dried up, people were making rifles like this. This is a Krebs custom rifle. This is one of his shortened AK-103 clones. You'll notice that it has a pinned and welded AK-74 type muzzle device on it. It is chambered in 762 by 39 though and it does have the AK-74M style side folding stock. But one of the shortcomings of this design is that the Russians made the stock fold the wrong way because one of the biggest problems the Russians ran into with the, A the AK was the inability to effectively mount optics, night vision, thermals, laser designators, things like that. But the Russian military for the last 30 years has been way behind Western countries in that regard. So they just stuck a rail on the side of the receiver, called it good, and they would just stick whatever optic they had on the side of the receiver. But keep in mind, the Russian military doctrine didn't call for the use of optics up until modern times. You look at the war in Ukraine, you're gonna see an awful lot of pictures of Russian soldiers running around with AK-74Ms with iron sights. And so they're 30 years behind us, but they're trying to get caught up with the Western worlds. And that's why the AK-12 was born. But the whole program was a complete mess. It started off poorly and it's ended poorly with the end result. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. The AK-103 was an export rifle. It has all the features of the AK-74M, but the 74M being 545 by 39, again, this being a 762 variant. The guns are stamped, they have polymer furniture, but again, the most defining feature being that side folding stock. But um, yeah, it's really, really inconvenient not being able to fold the stock, lock it in place for storage when you have an optic mounted. You'd have to take your optic off, put it in its pouch, and then fold your stock and jump in your BMP. Oops, almost dropped her there. So anyway, <sighs> Not very impressive. So let's talk about the AK-12 next, what the Russians were trying to do to catch up and modernize their military. And then let's also take a look at a rifle that is available on the US market. And if not just the rifle, but the components to build a rifle like it are available on the US market, which gives it similar functionality to the AK-12 without calling it an AK-12. In my opinion, the AK-12 should have been called the AK-74MA2. Let's take a look at this next rifle. So this guy's is a Bulgarian rifle. It's produced or imported by Arsenal and it's called the SAM-7 SF, but over on the right-hand side of the receiver, you'll see AR-M5F and then a three-digit number. And that's because this is a limited edition rifle. And this is number 10. This rifle has a hinging Picatinny rail across the top, which is something very similar to what the AK-12 would have. On top of it, I do have a sight mark element mini. Uh, a lot of times people criticize me because I'm only talking about more expensive products. So I've been trying to diversify a little bit and try more affordably priced products that led me into Holosun. Holosun has turned out to be an incredible sight company for me. I use Holosun optics on many of my carry guns. And so I decided to take a look at Sightmark. What drove me to do that is the Wraith 
system, the electronic site you've seen here on the channel before. Uh, my Wraith electronic site has been an outstanding performer. I have the Wraith Mini, and that thing is just a really, really great electronic site that I enjoy shooting quite a bit. And so I figured, what the heck, let's try out some of the Red Dot sites. I also have one more I'll probably talk about in a future video, which is this Volta right here. But anyway, that's not what today's video is about, um, but this site does have a three MOA dot on it. It's dual powered. It can run on a battery or solar power, has solar power on the top, has adjustment levels for brightness. It automatically adjusts brightness, uh, has that capability, comes with two mounts. This is the low mount. It has a high mount that comes with it in the box and it comes with the battery and they're very affordable. So anyway, this rifle is basically the Bulgarian answer to the AK-12. What is the AK-12 in essence? Well, it's gone through a quite the evolutionary period. They started looking at the Ratnik program way back in, I want to say, gosh, 2012 maybe? They were, the Russians were looking at trying to adopt a new service rifle. And the rifles that were put forth, there was a whole bunch of them, and none of them could pass military trials. None of them compared to the AK-74M that was currently in use. And so they kept trying and trying and trying. Then this whole thing called the AK-12 came out. A slipped by accident press release said that the Russian government had adopted a new service rifle, the AK-12. And at that point, the AK-12 was really in transitional period going from a, a brand new design basically to transforming back into nothing more than just an upgraded AK-74M, which is where it currently stands. And so the Russians have been struggling with this, but the whole purpose of the AK-12 and them trying to update their infantry rifles because the Russians are horribly behind Western countries in terms of the use of optics and night vision and thermals and laser designators. And that's what they were hoping to accomplish with the AK-12 was to give a rifle uh, the capability of mounting modern accessories like that to increase the hit probability, increase the lethality of their soldiers. So they adopted the AK-12. I think the thing went into production, uh, don't quote me on this, but I'm gonna say right around 2018, we started to see the current version of the AK-12 starting to be fielded by the Russian military. But here we are in 2022, Russia's in the middle of a war, still their primary infantry rifle is the AK-74M, and we're seeing Spetsnaz and some other units uh, using the AK-12s. But what's so funny to me is most of the rifles I've seen out there, the AK-12s in the hands of Russian soldiers, they still don't have optics on them. They did increase the sight radius. So you have a standard AK-74M front sight out here. They put uh, an AK type sight, but it's an aperture sight now at the rear of the pick rails. The pick rail on the AK-12 does run the full length out onto the gas tube. Uh, it does have a free float hand guard, but the receiver, the internals, even the side folding stock, which has evolved over time as well, is all AK-74M. Basically what the AK-12 is, is AK-74M with pick rails. And so that's why I call it hot trash. They, they have accomplished nothing. They haven't increased lethality. They haven't increased range, although they claim they did with the free float barrel, but we're talking about Russian junk ammunition to begin with. It's not the most accurate stuff and never has been. It, it, it doesn't really do anything. It, it's, it's really a big mess in my opinion. And so from a practical sense, I think the AK-12 is bad. It's just a bad idea. It's a waste of money. The Russians clearly don't have the money to adopt a new service rifle. They clearly don't have the money to outfit it in the way that they had it originally intended because their troops still aren't using night vision thermals or barely many of them are even using red dots right now in a war. So yeah, the AK-12 garbage. But let's take a look at this uh, Sam 7SF rifle here and what makes it unique and this is something that you can pick up for yourself and that is this piece right here which is the hinging top cover. You've seen this before in my 5.56 rifle video because there's a version of this rifle in 5.56 but you'll see how this raises up. It's bringing its rear sight up with it which is normal. It'll go to a certain point and that, that sight will pop over but then you can hinge that top cover up. It always goes back to zero because there's dimples back here on the receiver for it to lock into. And then it just comes apart like a standard AK. Just push in the takedown tab, just pull out your recoil spring, and there's your bolt and carrier. So 
it's just a standard milled receiver to AK on the inside. This one does have a folding stock on it, but unlike the Russian version, this folds to the proper side, the right side. It has a locking lever, much like the AK-74M or the um, Krinkov, and it locks into the folded position. To release it, just push the button and it swings back out. And it's important that it folds to the right because even though it has pick rails on top, it still maintains that legacy uh, rail system on the left-hand side of the receiver, which in my opinion should just be removed because it would be a weight reducing measure, a weight reducing measure of the gun. The gun is machined, therefore slightly heavier than the standard AKM. So this rifle really does shoot nicely. And the Bulgarian machined receivered guns have always shot really nicely. I've always counted them among some of the best AKs out there. Now I pulled this back down. Here's my little throw lever and you can adjust this. There's a little dial on the side that you can adjust the tension on it. But as it comes from the factory, it's perfectly tensioned. Just push it down till it pops, take this lever, fold it over and it pinches the receiver and it goes right back to zero. You can also use your iron sights if you don't have an optic like this on it that blocks the view because the pick rail is cut down the center, which allows your eye to see the rear sight as well as the front sight. Other than that, pretty standard AK fare. So this rifle, in a practical sense, to me, I would choose this over an AK-12. Um, but the collector in me still desperately wants to get my hands on an AK-12 rifle. The only hope of something like that happening, given the sanctions being applied to Russia, we'll never see guns out of Russia again, I fear. Um, that's, that's just history in the making there. It, it's just gone. I think our best option is for a company like Kalashnikov USA to make an AK-12. And whether or not they're going to do that, they're pretty tight-lipped about it. We'll see, but it would certainly be a hot seller on the U.S. market, despite the fact that the gun really is not all that impressive in terms of what it is. All right, let's go outside and do a little bit of shooting with this rifle because it's a nice day outside and I'd like to get some wind in the face and get out of the shooting shack for a little bit. This SAM 7 SF with the uh, muzzle device on it looks really, really sharp. It's a standard 24 millimeter thread out there. You'll notice it has a bayonet lug and a cleaning rod section, and it does come with a cleaning rod, but the cleaning rod goes back here to be held by the stock. And uh, again, that stock folds to the side. The nice thing also about these is that they do have a selector lever like a Galil, although the controls are reversed for the uh, semi-automatic Galil that's available in the US. You pull back for fire, push forward for safe. Pretty, pretty advanced, and that's something that uh, you're not gonna see on modern Russian equipment. Such great shooting guns. I've always liked the Bulgarian AKs. So you can operate that safety manually like you would with a standard AK, or you got that thumb control. Outstanding rifles. The downside to Arsenal AKs is they keep going up in price. Almost every year it seems like they get more and more expensive. Rifles like this will run as much as $2,500. And to me, that's just a ridiculous amount of money for an AK. Boy, has the market changed when AR-15s were considered expensive and AKs were considered a cost-affordable uh, alternative to the AR. Those days are long gone. It's also worth mentioning that the Russians not only made the AK-12, but they made the AK-15. The only difference between the two is the AK-12 is 545 by 39 in its chambering, and the AK-15 is 762 by 39 in its chambering.
Now, as I did mention, the rail system that you see here on this arsenal is available on their website typically. Sometimes it'll be out of stock, but it's a simple upgrade to put this pick rail up here. I also know at one point Krebs Custom made a rail system for the AK. I have one as well, very similar. It locks into a tab uh, on the rear back here, but it, uh, it gives you the same functionality of basically a return to zero mounting solution for the AK, giving you that Picatinny rail up top. What this doesn't have out here that the AK-12 has is a rail system that extends out because this rear sight's now gone. Again, it was moved to the rear of the pick rail and it's now aperture, but on the arsenal, at least this version, these handguards come and go in terms of availability, but this does have a pick rail on the bottom so you can put a vert grip and things like that on it. So in the end, what do I think of the AK-12? Well, I think the Russians are married to an, out, an incredibly outdated rifle design. I love the AK just as much as the next person. That's why I have AKs. But in terms of a modern infantry rifle, it, it just needs to go away and the Russians clinging to it. And this whole AK-12 debacle is just more evidence. They just need to dump the weapon system and come up with something totally new. Most of the world is, is doing that. The United States just went to an entirely new weapon system. Much like the Russians, we are married to the M16, but as I've said in the past, the M16 is a superior weapon system to the AK. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to make a comment down below, call me stupid, feel free. <laughs> we always enjoy reading those comments. I will stick around typically for the first day or two after we post our videos so that we can answer some of the questions you guys may have. Also, if you'd like to support us here on the Military Arms channel, the best way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. And also right here on YouTube, you got that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button and support us here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. Last but not least, please swing by, check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 14 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.